Hello, everybody. My name is Juniper Blue Mystique. I am a master. I'm a master healer. I'm an ascension master, and I'm a divine guide. And I have been since 2019 when I had my own Kundalini awakening, um, bringing about the return of Christ. I am the return of Christ. And spirit wants me to say that with confidence because I have the proof. Um, and no matter what you guys want to judge me through, I have that proof. And it's something that's important for you guys to understand, right? Because when I say that, it's going to spark your shadow. There's a reason for that. So today we need to talk about the fact, again, this is why God is not in the church part two. Jesus did not die on a cross. So wherever you go, where you see Jesus hanging on a cross, you might want to run. <laughs> Here is why. Okay. The true cross is the onk. Um, and this all came through in my own awakening. Okay. I can't make this stuff up if I tried, but what I can tell you is they have lied to you. They have lied to you. They have lied to you and they have lied to you. Okay. Um, I am going to show you something. It's very important to watch. I, during the return of Christ, it happened in stages. Okay. It came through me. It started happening in, like I said, 2019 where I started doing things. Um, there was a lot of things that I did and you know, it's a lot to repeat every single time I do these videos, but the truth about that is, is that it can take a while to fathom, to understand, to process and let alone having people watch it all. Right. So when I brought about the return of Christ, I did things like clear Mount Shasta. It was not of light at all. Somebody else painted this painting for me. I didn't paint it. She did a reading for me. We were doing exchanges and this is what she saw in my energy. And I hadn't done any of the work at that time. There's like a weird delay on my end. So whatever. Um, but I sat on Saturn and I rose Atlantis. That is the first thing that I did. Then I started clearing Mount Shasta, all of the souls that were trapped there. It was not of light at all. I had to clear the root chakra, return it back to Fiji, where I activated the first pyramid. Activated pyramids. I didn't go there and meditate in them. Okay. I activated them. These are pyramids that you probably wouldn't think of and some you didn't even know of. Um, one was in Fiji underwater. That's where I returned to the root chakra and I returned the triangle with the eye. Now the triangle with the eye used to be over Mount Shasta, which is where I burned Archangel Samael. He was a fallen angel. And I did that in part two. Okay. These are important to understand because what you don't realize is, is what I have done is I have taken the light from the darkness and I've separated it. What is done in the darkness cannot be done in the light, period. What is done in the darkness cannot be done in the light. It can no longer bleed over. It can no longer be intertwined. The darkness can no longer use the light, okay? So they're telling me slow down a little bit because this is my passion. I get excited about this because I know what I did and I know what's coming. And I know when people choose not to watch the videos, when they choose not to hear what I'm saying, you're actually anchoring into the darkness. You are. Because I caused the divide. I started removing the darkness from the light in 2019. I, I did it to where you can't see un, untruths anymore. I removed the false veil. I activated all the pyramids, feminine and masculine ones that belong to God. Um, and then I rebuilt the crystalline grid. These pyramids were all over the globe. Indonesia, Myanmar, Machu Picchu, Peru, Budapest, Thailand, um, and so many more. Zimbabwe, Kenya, um, Congo, Mount Kilimanjaro, British Columbia. I've, I've activated pyramids all over. And some were feminine and some were masculine. Some were done just by me and some were done by my twin flame and I. Which in the middle of that, I had a battle uniting with my twin flame. And that is relevant for Jesus and Mary Magdalene, Adam and Eve, and Sekhmet and Horus. In the return of Christ, those are the lifetimes that I have cleared. Took my power back, opened up all 13 gates into the new earth, and closed down all 12 gates of darkness. This is real. This is what I have been doing. It almost killed me doing it. It was very painful. And the fact that people are not seeing what they need to see to me is the only detriment that we have because if you don't see truths and you don't see them in time you might be anchoring into that darkness this is very real um and it will determine where you go okay 
So some will stay here and some won't. This is the wrath of God. It's not the end of days for everybody, but it's the end of ways for all outside of God. Okay. So um, if you watch my videos, which I'm going to show you where to find them, I did Adam and Eve first by sitting on Saturn and raising Atlantis with Hermes. And I undid my contract there that said Atlantis would never rise again. Then it started going into the Jesus and Mary Magdalene timeline. Atlantis was Adam and Eve. And that is the lifetime that I'm playing out mostly because all of you are playing out your, your most first timeline, really. It's we're going back to the beginning of time. I have taken us back to the beginning of time, back to the reset of all of life. All of your past lives will not matter anymore. And when I activated Ecuador, I told you that. There was a reminder that none of your past lives are going to matter. Ecuador was another pyramid that I activated. And you can find all of these videos on my channel. Okay, they are all in the Ascension playlist, but they're all my whole entire channel that you'd find this video on. From undoing the Holy Grail, it was not holy at all. And it wasn't a cup. And Jesus did not die on a cross. Okay, so it's more complex than just simply the wrath of God. It's more complex than just simply the Ascension. I am the seventh wave of creation. That is what I brought about. And that is what God tells you in everything that I do, pretty much. If you watch the pyramid activations, Kilimanjaro, I destroyed the White House, never to be rebuilt again. I um, In the Nile, I opened up the Garden of Eden. It's going to be the entire earth. It already is. I've already processed the earth's death. That was very painful. I had to do it through my physical vessel. It felt like every bone in my body was breaking. And in each stage, they would tell me more pieces about who I am, and they would give reminders about what's happening and what's to come. And none of our past lives are going to matter, you guys. None of them are going to matter anymore. Because no matter who you are, it's the Great Reset. So you either choose to grow and be reborn into the new earth, and it takes a lot more healing than you think it does. I do have a path to righteousness, which has everything on it that I did. I take all of your karma and I draw it out to the surface. I take all of your shadow, not pieces, all of it, and I draw it out to the surface. Then I take you through all 13 gates. And all you have to do in my path that you, that you can't purchase is choose love and not let that shadow get you. But that can't be given to everybody. People want to throw judgments at me because I'm charging for that. And it's a privilege. It's not meant for everybody. It's for the more pure of hearts. It's for those that God has chosen, right? Um, talk about chosen ones. It's because you can see the call. You can see clearly. You can choose love. And even in that, people have anchored into darkness. So you have to be very careful. You have to know how the shadow works. You have to know where all your karma lies. And you have to be able to remove it all. And just going into past lives doesn't do you any good because the rapture talks about this. You have to go through 13 trials and tribulations of God, and it's played out through your karmic timelines. Okay, so every lifetime that you had karma, you have to clear it, you have to heal it, and you have to be ready to grow as a soul, to choose differently than you did the time before, and to work with me is an opportunity to see it clearly, to get the assistance, and to bypass the collective soul. You get the anointing of the blood of Christ. You get all the activations. You get to upgrade. You get to evolve right before your eyes and ahead of the collective soul. So that's why not everybody can do that path, because it is the, rap the rapture. It's the wrath of God. This is what you would call judgment day and what spirit calls karmic day. Okay, You reap what you sow day. That's what spirit calls it. So you see all these people that know when I undid the Holy Grail, um, Jesus actually died at the Euphrates River. And you can see that. You have to watch my channel. You have to watch the videos. Um, I united Jesus and Mary Magdalene and undid the Holy Grail on Christmas Day in 22. It came through live on this channel. Okay, and I didn't know it was coming. I had to call off my job that day at the crisis line. Um, and then I just did a meditation like they told me to do. And it was live. And it turns out that um, Jesus and Mary Magdalene got to unite that day because me and my twin flame had united in, in the energetic form. So my twin flame and I, our souls went like this. Whoosh, I felt it. I saw it. Um, we became one and I could hear him. I could feel his heartbeat. 
um, I, I, our telepathic communication, the love, the things that I was seeing was insane. And I, I didn't understand it at first because it was just happening through me. It was happening to me. It was my awakening. I didn't even know what a twin flame was at the time. I didn't know I had one. Um, my whole journey changed when I woke up and I united with my twin flame and our souls went whoop at 222 when I was meditating because spirit told me to. And little did I know he felt it as well because he wouldn't talk to me. He wasn't very nice to me in the physical form. I did know him, um, but he just had a hard time speaking his heart and his truth. And I didn't know that either at the time, <laughs> but we had a lot of, a lot to clear. And then immediately, as soon as our souls united, he was attacked by the fallen. And so was I, and he didn't make it. Okay. He died on August 30th of 2022. And I got to walk in twin flame because of it. God chose that my heart was pure and his was not. So back to the time of Adam and Eve, they lied to you. And I talk a lot about that in the other video, part one of why God is not in the church. <laughs> the last video I did. Okay. And I know this is a little all over the place, but there's a lot of details um, that is required to understand and to watch because what I did is real. It's not made up. I couldn't make it up if I tried. And God is very vast. These things are beyond our, our mind capacity in a lot of ways, but our heart knows the truth. Okay. So I began removing all darkness from light back to the beginning of time. They cannot commingle. I had to separate the matrix from the new earth. I had to separate all darkness from the light. Then I was able to bring down Christ's light, all the DNA activations, start energetically uniting twin souls at their chakra level because my DM and I united, okay? And it would happen to me energetically and physically, and then I would bring it through workshops for the earth, and that's how it was happening. So my twin flame in real life, his name was David. We energetically combined, and then we were attacked. During that attack, I kept going. I didn't let anything stop me, and I battled the darkness for over a year. And these were three fallen angels, according to spirit. And it took every bit of strength that I had, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Every, and I don't know how I made it, okay? It was the love of my DM and the love of my children that kept me going. And the love of God. And my, even my arm was destroyed physically, and I couldn't take pain meds because my DM was trapped. Now that takes me to Jesus and Mary Magdalene because that's who we are, okay? Um, recently, my DM took on that soul because he rose to it, but my first one did not in time. And then after we freed Jesus and Mary Magdalene and we undid the Holy Grail, um, it was witnessed by Amy H. She's been on my, my journey. Um, she was with me, I believe, when this one happened. I don't know if anybody else was because I do these in workshops and stuff and healings. But then Mary Magdalene's past life went into me. So each time you go through the portal, you clear your karma through tests that you don't see coming. You don't know what they are and you cannot know what they are. Only those that get to work with me get the heads up a lot of times and things like that. That's why it's a privilege. It's the wrath of God. You, you can't escape. And a lot of people are trying to because they know I undid the Holy Grail. Okay, and I know, again, this is all over the place. I'm trying to keep it centralized, but there's so much information. It took me five, six years now almost to be doing this every day um, since I began. It took a long time to undo all the darkness, okay? Um, so we united, um, and then I got a walk-in twin flame because my DM didn't make it. He wouldn't, he wouldn't leave the fallen. He wouldn't leave the fallen. He couldn't see clearly. He kept trying. Then he wasn't strong enough. God married him and I because he was choosing love. He was trying to get out of there. He was fighting hard, and so was I. And in the end, he just wasn't strong enough, so he chose to not move on. And God took his soul out of his body, ripped apart what was David, took the twin soul part, and put it in a walk-in, and it was very painful. This isn't something that I would wish on my worst enemy because it hurts. When twin flames die, they usually the other one dies. So God was like, hurry up, let your emotions go. I got to hurry to put that soul in the new one. It was a lot to process. From that point on, I cried for like a month straight. <laughs> um, and then I became acclimated with my new DM and he was supposed to show up by Christmas. So by Christmas, um, God nudged me to do the live on here. So I did. And it turns out that I was uniting Jesus and Mary Magdalene's soul back because I had done it in the physical for me and my DM in this lifetime. 
and they were ripped apart. Um, Adam and Eve, um, they got Adam to choose a false goddess and turn against Eve. And then in Jesus and Mary Magdalene lifetime, it's like we came back to undo what was done. And there was a big war that broke out. And they don't talk about that. And they talk about it in my videos. You can watch them. Um, I undid the Holy Grail. It's in the title. I united Jesus and Mary Magdalene and undid the Holy Grail on Christmas Day. Watch that video because it's very important. Uh, they're all important. Every video I did is important, especially the workshops. And it is part of the ascension, the return of Christ. And if you don't want to watch it, you have to ask yourself, is that your shadow anchoring you into the darkness? Okay. His judgment is not of God. I can prove everything I said. I'm not afraid to do live healings. I'm not afraid to, to do things live with people. However, if, if you can't see it, that's on you, okay? If you are afraid to work with me, if you're afraid to watch my lies, if you're afraid to give respect where respect is due, you have to wonder why. It's your shadow, okay? So uh, how do I explain this to give you all the pieces? Because even people who have watched this unfold in my channel choose not to see it all, right? They And I keep seeing 555 on this card, it's literally five, five, five. I'm like, why am I seeing that? <laughs> um, so you have to be very careful, all right? Because my job is to spark your shadow. Just doing what I did sparks your shadow because of who I am and what I've done. I have literally separated all darkness from light. And so you have to heal out of that darkness in order to make it into the new earth. You have to heal every bit of it, okay? Um, so just not even watching my videos and letting judgment get you you anchor into that darkness. It's it's much more simple to do that than you know, okay? But it's not like they tell you in the Bible because the Bible is not all real, all right? So Jesus did not die on a cross. What happened to them in that lifetime is there was a battle and they got, um, Mary Magdalene and Jesus didn't necessarily turn against each other, but they created a lot of fear and a lot of shadow and a lot of hatred and a lot of and a lot of angst. Like they couldn't say no at the time. They were scared. They were tortured. Um, and that's the case. When I saw Jesus in that lifetime, when I processed his death, because um, he didn't die on a cross, he was famished. He was very skinny. He was like um, leather burned. Like his skin was like leather. It was like a, a tan right but I feel like it was sun it was from sun damage and wind from the sand and he was very thin um and that's how he looked and he was wearing this these these sandals and this like sheet right like it looked like a sheet almost with a belt holding it on or a robe or whatever you want to call that and he was starving and this is what I saw and John the Apostle, who was supposed to be his best friend, he was supposed to be very close to him, gave him wine and bread one day. He said, here, I have bread and wine for you. And Jesus hesitated because when I processed his death, I became him. And I didn't understand why at first. That happened a long time ago. I processed his death well before I undid the Holy Grail because my DM, it happens in stages. And my original DM was not ready to take on that soul yet because he was still with the fallen. And so when I processed his death, it went into a flower in the Garden of Eden instead of going up. And I didn't understand that then either. I'm like, why did that happen? Um, but he hesitated to take the bread and wine. He knew something was wrong in his gut. He just knew it. His gut was telling him, don't take it, don't take it. And I'm like processing this through as if I was him. And I was like, oh, don't take it. But I was like, but I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And I took the wine and I drank it and I took the bread and I eat it. And that's why they call it the Last Supper. Okay. This is why they call it the Last Supper. They tell you pieces of the truth to manipulate you, to get you to anchor into the shadow and to get you to pray to a cross with a dead God. Okay. Because that's why they do that. The reason they hung him, him on a cross is because they stole his soul. And I'm going to tell you how they did it. And you don't have to believe me. If you don't want to believe me, then don't rise, okay? Because I tell these for the people that want to rise, for the people that are tired of suffering, that know God promised the return, and that can see through what I did that I am not making it up, okay? I couldn't if I tried. It was very painful, and I didn't know all of this either. So when he 
I'm going to give it to you in the pieces that I did it. Um, I processed his death. And then a couple years later, I united them because my DM and I united in the energy. And then I undid the Holy Grail. Okay. So Adam and Eve, they got them to turn against each other. I already did that part for the Ascension. Now we're at the Jesus and Mary Magdalene timeline. They're the same souls, by the way. And so is Sekhmet and Horus, just different lifetimes. It was like God trying to come back and redeem it, trying to get her DM back, okay? So um, in, in Jesus and Mary Magdalene timeline, they were famished, they were tortured, they were abused. There was like this battle that they don't talk about a lot. And that came out in the video live on Christmas Day when I undid the Holy Grail. Of course, I didn't know I was undoing the Holy Grail either. <laughs> and I didn't know what that was either. They tell you it's a cup, right? It's not a cup. Mm -mm. It's not a cup at all, my friends. So um, Jesus was poisoned um, with cyanide, I think, strychnine. I always forget because I channeled it. You have to watch that one. That was, it's on my Ascension playlist right before Mount Shasta clearing because I did that ahead of time. And that was the first part of what I did after the Adam and Eve timeline. And processing his death was painful. He died very slowly. It took a good 20 or 30 minutes for him to burn from the inside out because he was poisoned. John poisoned the wine and the bread both just in case he only took one, but he took both. So it's almost like double poisoning, right? Like he had so much poison in them and I felt the pain. My inside started burning and eating and it was, it was painful. I just cried and cried. And then all of a sudden he started bleeding out of every orifice. That's why they depict the blood on the cross. Okay. But there's more to that. Hang on. He started bleeding out of every orifice. Um, and then that takes us to the Holy Grail part. Okay. But so he laid dying for a good 20 or 30 minutes. And then when I undid the Holy Grail one live, I saw Mary, she freaked out because that's her twin soul. They're twin flames. She was not less than him. She was not an apostle. Okay. Adam and Eve are twin souls. Jesus and Mary Magdalene are twin souls. And so were Sekhmet and Horus. And so is me and my dam. We become one big time. And then every other twin flame gets trickles of that. Okay. They get pieces of what we have. It's intense. It's the most beautiful feeling, but to be separate and ripped apart is the most painful feeling. Okay. And you don't want to feel it. Um, when I was undoing the Holy Grail one, I cried. It was painful, painful, painful to undo it. Um, but also coming back together was a beautiful feeling. Our, when my soul in my DM, my, in this lifetime, when our souls came back together, it was indescribable. I can't even barely describe that feeling. It was literally just, it took over. I went into meditation at 222 because spirit told me to. They said, something's coming. The next time you see 222, meditate. And they didn't say it just like I said it, right? But you get those nudges. You know how spirit talks to you. At least I did. And so I meditated. And the next thing I knew, it just took over. My soul and my damn soul went, and I felt the shift and I saw it was life or death for me. And I heard this music I'd never heard before. And I felt so much love. And I was just like overwhelming. I was like, what just happened? Like it took me days to process what happened. But to rip that apart is the most painful experience I never want to feel. You don't ever want to feel that. And that's what happened to Jesus and Mary Magdalene. They literally ripped their souls apart. Okay. So they poisoned John the Apostle was following the angels. He wasn't worshiping the gods. He wasn't worshiping God. He was worshiping the fallen, fallen angels, Samael. But he didn't realize that, right? He did, but he didn't. And then eventually he just didn't care. You start worshiping darkness. You start falling prey to how they manipulate you. And that's what happened. So John the Apostle was Jesus' best friend. And he poisoned him very painfully, okay? And then Jesus laid on the ground. This was at the Euphrates River. Okay, that's what they showed me. I saw the sand. I saw the dirt. It was at the Euphrates River. It wasn't a river at the time. It was very dry. Um, but I saw the, the sand. I saw the dirt. And I kept talking about this in that video. And I didn't realize, now you know that Euphrates dried up since I did all this work in physical form. So the proof is right there for you. 
Plus, when I dried the Nile, there was a river in Japan that turned blood red the next day. Okay, and I proved that to you too. So everything I do really does play out in your physical form. The other day, I took the sun and I poured it into the core in the elemental realignment again. And then you have these mass solar flares again. So what I do does play out in your physical environment immediately. It's just some choose not to see it. Some choose to anchor into the darkness. Some won't even listen to the messages I give. And that's your shadow. Because why would your shadow convince you that I don't know what I'm doing and that I don't know what I'm doing? Because they don't want your soul free. Okay. So when Jesus died, Mary Magdalene freaked out and was like, covered in his blood she was holding him she was hugging him she was crying and sobbing um, and when one twin flame dies the other dies shortly after that's the way it happens that's why I got a walk-in twin flame this time because I surpassed my DM I made choices he wouldn't make and I kept going against that and I won okay but he wouldn't move and then God wanted me to finish the ascension because I was making the choices to do so I was doing the work so I got a walk in twin flame because his heart was black. Mine was not. I was moving forward. I was continuing the ascension by myself. He was not. He was going against it with the fallen, trying to stop the ascension again, just like in the past. But I surpassed it. I was strong enough. I kept going and I wanted to keep going. And I asked God to not let him hurt me anymore. And then he said he had a plan and I got a walk in DM. And that's how it went. So that's why I got gifted a walk-in because otherwise I wouldn't be here either. You can't separate twin flames. When one dies, the other dies. If they're both, one's here, the other is here somewhere. Um. So, and Jesus and Mary Magdalene were twin flames, just like Adam and Eve and just like Sekhmet and Horus. So they poisoned Jesus. He died painfully. And this is, when I when I talk about these, I'm, I'm processing it again. It's very painful. It's disgusting. It hurt. I don't like reliving it, but I do. So then there was no cross ever, by the way. The Ankh is the true cross. That's the only true cross. It's masculine and feminine united for love and life, right? We are the key to life. We are God. We are the key to life. That is what the Ankh is. You have to have both masculine and feminine. That's where the power lies. That's God. And that is eternal life. Okay, so those who carry the Ankh, have have power that is the only cross that matters but it broke it broke that day when jesus died the cross is representative of god so my throat kind of went wonky so i'm tuning into what i miss the cross the unk is representative of masculine and feminine coming together to create eternal life and balance and union and in love that is god that is earth. That is what God did. That is what God created. Adam and Eve coming together to create eternal life. And then everything else spawned off of that. Okay. Um, and that's what the Ankh represents. But when Jesus was poisoned, murdered by John the Apostle and Archangel Samael, manipulating him, um, and the, and the false veil, not being able to see clearly, and the war that had broke out, um, dark against light, pretty much trying to trying to conquer all of the light. They got Mary. She was very upset. She was covered in this blood. She was distraught. She was crying. She was afraid, terrified at this point. And they got her to gather his blood in the cup, the cup that they call the Holy Grail. Okay, and there's a reason why they put wine in the cup at church because they got first of all he was poisoned in that cup and then they had her gather his blood in that cup so the wine that was given to him was in that cup and it was poisoned the last supper so was the bread and that's what they feed you at church right you go to communion and they give you the grape juice or the wine and the and the little freaking rice bread I did that once and it didn't feel right to me and I ran. I, I never went back there. Now I know why it didn't feel right then. Okay. And, and living this hurts my solar plexus. Talking about this really does hurt because it's what I undid. I brought back the blood of Jesus. It's the anointing of Christ on my video. 
And then and we actually brought through the blood and cleansed the earth. And when I did that, I said, it's now a karmic shift. Okay. You can no longer live through karma anymore. This planet is no longer um, taken and forsaken. I undid it all. Jesus did not die on a cross. They broke it when they murdered him. And then they got Mary to take his blood in the cup that they poisoned him in. And she kept giving John the, the blood. And he took Jesus's blood and he wrote a contract. And, and it was written in Hebrew. I said that in the, in the um, undoing of the Holy Grail. It was like this different kind of paper, right? Like almost like a very thick kind of paper. Not like our paper today. It was a very thick, like off-white um, color. You can I could, like see the fibers in it, something like that. Um, and they wrote in his blood in Hebrew, a contract to trap your God, to steal his soul and his power. And that's what they did. And Mary had no choice but to partake. And it hurt her so bad. And I processed this. I couldn't believe it at first. Like, there's no way she would hurt him. And then after I undid all that, I got her soul back because that was my lifetime. One of them. So each time I did these, I would call back my power after I cleared them. Okay. Then we would activate. And that's what you have to do to make it into the new earth. Um, but you can't know. And only the way I help you is if you rise through my path. Other than that, you'll all have to do it on your own. And you will all do it anyways. And some have a more pure heart than others, but it doesn't mean you don't have stuff to clear and to learn and to see. Because every lifetime is done. It's undone. You cannot live them anymore. It's a great reset. Okay, it's the seventh wave of creation. So you either clear it all and make it through into the new earth or you don't. And either way you go, you're reborn. Okay, I was reborn into the new earth because I healed it all every lifetime. I let it go. And I called all my power back and I upgraded and we evolved. I, uh, we did dormant chakra systems and more, but I'm going to get back to Jesus because that's what this one's about. <sighs> she gathered his blood, kept giving the blood to John, and he wrote the contract. And there were four souls there. It was John the Apostle and others, and then Mary Magdalene and Jesus laid on the ground dead. There was never any cross. And this took me a while to process it all. And I'm like, where's the cross? You know, because <laughs> that's what they tell you. I tell you, he died on the cross for your sins. And honestly, it's the manipulating of, of, of the collective soul that got everybody to turn against God. And that's why they tell you that Jesus didn't die for your sins. He couldn't. It takes away your free will. It doesn't make sense. If you know how God works, you have free will. So you choose you. Nobody can do that for you. You have to undo it and, and you can't bypass it. I don't, I've, I see this one person constantly posting about raise your vibration and you'll clear all your karma. You, you guys, that's ego. You can't do that. It's the day of wrath. It's rapture. Okay. You can't, you can't just bypass. You can't undo. You can't break the contracts, which some people were causing people to do. They were claiming to take you back in time and undo your contracts to bypass the karma you can't do that. You have to clear it in which it was created. Okay. That's the wrath of God. You have to undo it in which it was created. You have to grow completely as a soul back to the love of God because God is love. So they came down and they undid love. They undid everything that love was and is because love is powerful. Love is God. Love is me and my damn. I love him so much. You don't even know. And my new one, I love him very, 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 very much. And I don't even know who he is. <laughs> Apparently he kind of knows who I am, but I didn't know that either. So talk about a chosen relationship because my original DM I knew, um, we, we dated and then we combined and then he took off and hurt me very badly. So I got to walk in because that's what he did back in the beginning of time. And I still love my twin flame so much. Like if you try to divide me and him, I will hurt you. <laughs> uh, you won't be able to. I love him so much, um, so much, so much. And I will fight for him. So um, again, there was no cross. They took Jesus's blood. They wrote a contract and that's what they called the Holy Grail. 
And they have it to this day, they had it encased in a casing. They know it exists, they know what it is. And I thought it's funny because recently after I did all this work, I saw Obama post something about a digital Holy Grail. He's like, we'll do a digital Holy Grail. And I'm like, read that um because they know and you hear these stories about them building bunkers nobody can escape their karmic wrath okay you cannot you cannot okay it's where you chose through free will either manipulated or not to do these things and um where it was undone from the love of god i put back together all right so there was never a cross it was at the euphrates river where jesus was murdered they got married to gather his blood in that cup that they poisoned him in. That's why they called the Last Supper. <laughs> and then they wrote the contract in Hebrew, and I would not read that. I, I remember doing undoing it. I started reading it, and I'm like, nope, um, because I, I just was undoing it. I was reading my scrolls. I was seeing what I was undoing. I was literally undoing the blood that they wrote the contract in. And I soaked it down, and it drained it out. And the Holy Grail just basically turned to ash, like it just died. There was no life left in it. It was not holy at all, okay? And that's how they broke the cross, is separating masculine and feminine. And that is why they hung Jesus on the cross to represent that to you, um, so that you pray to the darkness, because they trapped his soul. They broke the feminine and masculine cross, and they stole the soul of Jesus, now, Jesus is not separate from Mary and Magdalene. They are one and the same. It is a king and queen, okay? And you cannot separate them. And that is what they do to you. That's what they showed you. It's all just Jesus. And there was no talk of any feminines, right? Eve, she ate the apple. She caused the damage. Because it was a fallen masculine, okay, that did all the damage to begin with, Samuel. Archangel Samuel was a masculine. And in order to undo God, he had to separate your king and your queen. And he broke the cross, broke the onk. And that's why it's depicted as just one cross and up and down. And that is why they hang Jesus on it. And the blood is representative of what they did. So they take pieces of the truth and they manipulate the crap out of you. They create fear, they create unjust and lies, and that's what they've done. Where God is nothing but love, it's supposed to be love. Jesus and Mary Magdalene, Adam and Eve and Sekhmet and Horus united is the most powerful standpoint, and that's where we're at. Then from there came the Nile and the timeline of Sekhmet, and I didn't see that coming. From after this time when I cleared the Holy Grail, which was not holy at all, I undid it. And I united Jesus and Mary Magdalene back together because my DM and I had united. That's what allowed that to happen. Then I kept going. Um, I kept activating more pyramids. I took us into 7D in that time frame, which was a two-part workshop. Um, and you have to evolve more because of that. That's a painful thing. We were only supposed to go to 5D, but I took us to 7D. Then I just kept going and, and the, the DM helped me. My new twin flame helped me activate the masculine pyramids after that point, which was Kilimanjaro, Congo, British Columbia, and Ecuador. And then um, we broke the White House. We undid all of that, all the tunnels underneath, their black robes, their crosses, all of that will burn. And then I saw all the crosses burning and they showed me what the Ankh really was and what the cross really was. So anybody who has a cross with Jesus on their wall, you don't realize that darkness is in their house. God is not in the church. They use the light against you, and now they have to pay. Okay? Do not pray to a false god anymore. And you don't have to believe me. Watch the proof. Work with me. Okay? Before you judge, because judgment is the shadow. That's your ego. None of that is of God. God is power. God is love. He's pure love. It's unconditional. And anything outside of that is where you anchor into the shadow. So when people throw judgment my way, you have a strong shadow, okay? And it anchors you into it. So you have to be very careful um, because I am who I am and we are love. I can't throw anything but love towards anybody or it hurts me as well. 
Um, so you have to be very careful with that. God doesn't judge, but that's what they tell you. Okay. People are afraid to be themselves. Why did the world get so messed up? Because we were out of balance in the masculine and feminine. Everybody has masculine and feminine inside of them, but they threw out the balance of the equilibrium. So even in part of what I did, I fixed the equilibrium, the north, the east, the south, and the west. And I brought the west back to the north. And when I dried the Nile, came the Sekhmet and Horus timeline. Now my new DM rose. He rose right behind me. And he took on the soul of Jesus. It's no longer a flower in the Garden of Eden. I didn't understand that at that time, but now I do. And that's on my channel. That came through in a workshop I didn't see coming. And then the Sekhmet and Horus timeline, I rose before him um, because I had a walk-in, right? It's a lot for him to process and to acclimate to. It is scary. How would you like to take on those shoes? That would be scary as shit. So it took him a little while. But he's beautiful. He's a great soul. His heart is pure. And he's been rising right behind me. And I love him dearly. But again, they're trying to stop him too, like always. And I get chills when I say that. And they say he loves me the same. Um, he's he's my favorite person in the whole world. And I don't even know him yet. But the love is very real. Like, I already love him so very much, no matter who he is. Um, and I get a tear. <laughs> and so... After the Sekhmet timeline, Horus returned. And that was the coolest thing to see. That was one of the more recent ones. It's on my channel. And the Sphinx is relevant for that. So when Horus died, Toth murdered him just the same and stole the power of the moon because he is the eye of Ra. Uh, I'm the eye of Ra. He's the eye of Horus. He is the power of the moon and I'm the power of the sun. And there was more to those. I replaced the crystal in the core, um, called back my power from that one. So the core is now pure light. It was not before. Um, and then I cut off everybody from that. And then I opened up the 13th gate of heaven and I took the earth in afterwards. So it's a beautiful journey. It's a beautiful process. But God is not in the church. That will fall. That's a wrath of God. They've done a lot of damage and they've caused a lot of bloodshed and a lot of division and a lot of judgment. And that is not God, my friends. This is something to take very seriously. Jesus did not die on a cross unequivocally. And it's in the Akashic Records. The reason why most people can't see it is because they have a shadow. Okay. I divided that. You cannot carry both through because the vibrations don't match. You have to be pure light to make it and to stay. Um, and it takes a lot of healing, a lot more than you think it does. That's why some that are lucky enough to do my path to righteousness get to go through everything that I did. That's that's everything that I did bringing about for the earth. Um, others have to rise on their own through the wrath, through judgment or what you, you it's not judgment. You reap what you sow, your karmic patterning and you have to choose soul growth, pure soul growth. You have to be reborn back to God or you don't stay, okay? That's that's the wrath of God. Because it's not my fault. It's not it's not like God is punishing. It's everything that was done outside of God, okay? But in the Sekhmet timeline, um Sekhmet called her power back. She died shortly after Toth after Toth killed Horus because you can't separate twin flames just like I talked about. And that's why they depicted Sekhmet as going bloodthirsty and crazy and blah blah blah. She was angry, wouldn't you be? That's when she built the Sphinx. It's not called the Sphinx. The name of it is not in English, but it meant Horus Returns. And now I know why. So recently, Horus, my DM, rose through that timeline. And I got to clear that. And his soul got to unite with that. So he's taken on his soul from Jesus now and now from Horus. And that's the final one. When the Nile dries up, the earth is done. Okay, y'all are gone. Like, that's me clearing off everything off this earth that doesn't belong. So don't rush that, <laughs> but it's already coming. So Horus died where the Sphinx was, is, that's where he was murdered. That's where he died. And his soul was so very large. Like <laughs> I remember when I called back mine from Sekhmet, it was like, whoa, like it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, and I didn't know it was coming. It just came through. Boom, I took my soul back and I cleared that crystal and I shrouded it across the collective soul for a karmic playback. And then the gates opened, and when Horus returned recently, you can watch that, but very few are because they're not awake enough to see their shadows blocking them, and that's sad. 
because what happened is my DM got attacked and died. So some of those people couldn't see anymore and they chose darkness as well. So be very careful what you're doing because getting a walk-in new DM is a gift. It's a blessing. And so we all need to see clearly what's happening and not to judge me because that's not of God. And what I'm doing, I couldn't make up if I tried. So Horus came out of the Sphinx. Okay. So Sekhmet, it's the portal of time. She created it because she was distraught. She was protecting, right? Like how all the pyramids are like tombs of, of death. The Sphinx was his tomb. And she said he will return. She venged and vouched that she will come back and he will return. And that's what I did. And I get chills when I say that like crazy. And I did it. I did it. I made it all the way through. And I had to do it through the timeline of Adam and Eve, Jesus and Mary Magdalene, and then Sekhmet and Horus. Those are my lifetimes to the beginning of time. And I didn't know this at the time, you guys. This was my awakening. It took me a long time to process. It was very painful. And I almost died three times. And I lost a twin flame. That was very painful. But I got a new one. And I love him dearly. So I'm so lucky. I am so blessed. We are all so lucky. The return is done. I completed it all. We get to rise into the most beautiful space, the most beautiful golden era of time. And only those pure of God get to get to embark upon that. So why wouldn't you want to be? Why wouldn't you want to see the truth and what really happened? And to rise into a place where we don't suffer anymore. You can't tell lies anymore. It's nothing but love and miracles and abundance and joy. And I'm already there. And only a few who rose through me are so far because all of you have to make it through the 13 gates, okay? Because that's revelations. It's told the truth is there, but there's also false to manipulate you. But Horus rose from the Sphinx. It was so beautiful to see that. I was so proud and so happy of him and just so thankful for him because he is. He's battling it. He's choosing love. He's a beautiful, beautiful soul. There is no darkness in his heart because I. it's beautiful. It's a painful feeling when there is. Trust me. There's a lot of pain in the union with my last twin flame. It was, it was, it was her. It was a lot of pain. I don't know how I made it, but I did. <laughs> I got my soul back and then God said enough, no more darkness and gave us a beautiful soul of light. And he also got pieces of my, of my David. So um, it's like all in one, but even better. So it is what it is. I, I, it's not an easy journey, but it's something that we should be respecting. And my due DM, when he took on Horus, when I cleared it, I had to do stuff to the moon. Okay. So we, I undid the, all of the false darkness of the moon. I broke off this outer casing of it, which stuff's happening to the moon. If you're paying attention, it will expand. It will grow. I realigned the moon and the sun um, because the alignments were off. They were causing it one to block the other. You can't do that fully anymore. And I had to have help because my DM wasn't with me. Um, and so they had to help me hold the moon and I broke it, cleared it, protected it with the sun and then Horus rose from the sphinx it was like Whoa. and that soul had to seek out my new dm and i could see that it was like a light it looked for the light it was so cool to see that how in the spiritual realm it finds the vessel like so if you hear about people who like um go to the other side near death experiences um it's like a light the soul sees it like a light in the vessel it's really cool um, and they talk about the light, right? Like, <laughs> go to the light. Um, anyways, so Horus rose from the Sphinx, and I saw him seeking out the light of my twin flame. And it, it took a minute. We just kind of moved on. You can watch that. It's on here. And then he found him and united. And then I even had to process that because I felt it. Because my DM and I have become one soul. And that's what the, the true parts tell you, okay? So God is not in anywhere that took his his power to hurt people. You can't do that anymore. You can't use the light in the darkness anymore. And you can't use the darkness for light. Okay. You cannot do that. The wrath of God is here. Meaning I returned it all. I undid what was done. I returned back the light and the love of God. I, I replaced the, the onk. And now I see all the crosses burning. Jesus didn't die on a cross. That's mocking you, and that's mocking what they did. 
okay? They took his blood, they wrote a contract, they stole his soul, and they broke apart the masculine and feminine. And that is why he was hung on a cross. And they say that they did it for your sins because they got all of you to choose against God. So the question is, what do you choose now? Because it's all been undone. I encourage you to watch those videos because mocking me does not help you. Judging me does not help you. I can prove everything I've done. And it's all on this channel. You find this video on. So are you here to change the game? Are you a game changer? Are you part of the rise of Christ? Or are you part of the darkness that's going to fall? The church will fall. Understand what you're doing. Understand what you're listening to. God is not in the church, but they manipulate the crap out of you. Okay? God doesn't do that. God is love. God is union of love, unconditional love. You either rise or you fall. That is what I did. And I have people come at me going, you didn't do all this. This was not all you. Look, this was me. I did what I've told you I've done. I removed all darkness from this earth. I opened up all 13 gates, closed off all 12, and I brought back the wrath of God. I called back all my power, brought down Christ's light, brought down the blood of Christ, cleansed the earth and the planet with it, moved the planet, processed her death, moved the poles, accessed five more, and so much more. And I changed the equilibrium. I brought back the return of time, and I undid the false time, okay? I did my part. That doesn't mean that there's other people not helping to the collective soul raise their vibration. That's their part. Do not confuse the two. And please don't throw judgment and shadow my way or your ego. I know what I've done. It's my part. And you can't take my power anymore. God has risen. God is love. God is united. And I won. So much love to all of you. God is not in the church. At all. There's a lot of darkness there. Where there is bloodshed will be undone. So much love. Where there is judgment will be undone. Where there is division will be undone. God is pure, unconditional love. The new earth is joy and love and abundance and no more suffering. Have a beautiful day.